So one thing is clear that, and everybody, America does what they think is sensible, China does, England does, Germany does, and that's fine. You know, you live with the with the uh, your own decision. <laughs> the only difference is because America is so deeply enmeshed in world trade, what America does doesn't only affect them, it affects everybody. Which is the reason why uh, the, the importance of the dollar has to decline. So I think what you will see, you know, already you will start seeing people invoicing in other currencies. I was, I didn't know, you know, most commodities are priced in dollars. But I have a client uh, uh, in Turkey that sells, uh, uh, that buys uh, polyethylene and they buy it in euros. So, I mean, little by little it's already happening. I think what you will see is you will see a far, huge amount of, oh, this is good news for me, you will see more and more bilateral types of transactions. So rather than X replacing Y, okay, today the dollar is probably used in 80% of all transactions. That will come down to 70, 60, 50, yen, uh, yuan will go up, rupee may also come. You know, so <clears throat> it is just that it's not going to be a one-man show anymore. That I think is very clear. Uh, what about a commodity, uh, say gold, coming uh, into the picture? You know, commodities are too nuts. Yeah. Too, uh, currencies are volatile, commodities are so much more volatile. Okay. You know, it doesn't make sense. It's going back, you know, you can't go back. See, rupee is still not fully convertible, but if, if at all rupee is made fully convertible, how this currency volatility will affect rupee? And as our country is becoming a kind of important country in the world, how uh, you kind of pose the rupee as an open, open market currency? See, I think we will be very cautious about making it convert. But I think we've done well, you know. So, uh, uh, so I think, I don't think it's going to get fully convertible anytime soon. Okay. You know, not five years, I don't think. Um, I think right now it's reasonably volatile already, you know. Um, I think we need to recognize that the door is open, so the winds of the world come in and volatility increases. I think we've got, uh, I think we have lots of other technical things to do in India. You know, we have to really develop a debt market. You know, we need to focus on things like that before we get to looking at convertible. What kind of opportunity we have from this currency volatility? You could trade. Currency futures, if you like. No, I'm talking as Indian economy for next 10, 5 years, medium term. <clears throat> See, volatility is not an opportunity. Volatility is a risk. Right? So fundamentally, if volatility is higher, that's bad for everybody. Okay? You have to learn how to manage it. And if you manage it better, you can do better. Like one of the, you know, in, in taking that to a micro thing, you know, in the, in the um, power sector, right? Everything, all volatility is passed through to the end user, which is the state electricity board, and then we pay it in our bills. So I would sometimes tell companies, well, if you actually manage the risk and give them a fixed price, you might be able to charge more, right? Because the customer will be very happy. But, you know, people want to keep it as easy as possible. I don't want to carry any risk, let me move on. So volatility is a risk, it's not an opportunity at all. Jamal Saab, which are the economy of which countries is affected by terrorism, particular reference to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq. In Germany is fearing a terrorist attack like 26 level. So what are your views on that? See, I'll tell you, you know, I feel, just like I said when I was talking, that the fall of the Berlin Wall was actually the beginning of the decline of America. So I also believe that 9-11 was actually the beginning of the decline of this Islamic terrorism. See, everything is a cycle, no? So when something that big happens, uske baad it can only go down, right? Now, when something is so horrible, there will be debris for a long time. So what we are seeing now is the debris from that peak, right? Now, it can turn and peak again also, but to turn it has to reach a bottom. So what I feel is despite all the, the you know, newspaper headlines, of course it's terrible. If one person dies from terrorism, it's terrible, right? And people are dying even as we speak. But I think that the, the, the movement is over, you know. So while it's going on, just like, you know, you want to protect against currency volatility, you got to protect against terrorism, that costs you money, 
and makes your less efficient, less uh, uh, makes life more difficult. You know, so the Pakistan is a big issue. You know, I don't know what the solution is. I don't know how we fix it. Uh, but I I do think that we've got to fix it. You know, Bajwala ka ghar mein angar hai. So you've got to do something. You can't just sit. I mean, they're burning us. I don't know. I mean, I cannot understand why Mr. Kassar is still alive. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand it. I mean, I just cannot fathom. I don't want to read about it. Just get rid of it. Yeah. Don't waste my time. You know. So I, we've got our process. You know, we all have to participate in getting the process more sensible. Because are we lethargic? Of course. Well, I think you know everybody is. You know, I got involved with an election when uh, last uh, uh, parliament election. I put a lot of energy into trying to get an independent candidate, uh, uh, Mira Sanyal, and we failed miserably. I couldn't believe it, you know. But I haven't done anything since then. <laughs> you know. The future of uh, SDR in the new G7. Well, I think you know. I you know. I think creating one. You know, this whole thing we are wedded to. There should be one thing that we can all. But I think you know, it's great for me. There will be many. <laughs> so, you know, people will have to learn to deal with lots of different animals, is what I think. Yeah. Sir, as you say, uh, deal in currency. Isn't it dealing with currency in open market, open market increasing currency volatility? It is, but see, like I said, you know, you have to have a balance, right? You can either be dead and have no volatility, or you can be wild and have 25% percent volatility. Then why in open market? Why an open market meaning? Like how am I trading it? Like I am able to trade it, like keep it and then trade it for currency. That shouldn't be there, no? I don't understand your point. Like if I'm, I can no, buy. No, see, I can say, buy what, I, what I'm saying is volatility is good. That is the first thing. Too much volatility is bad. Okay. <clears throat> Now what is too much? That is the question. Right. I'm saying you look globally. Look, look at the old world right, that was running in a particular way. The volatility of the Deutsche Mark or the Euro against the dollar averaged at about 10-11 percent, and business was running smoothly. You would say that is a reasonable level, right? Now today our volatility has come up to about 7-8 percent. So I would say we as we should be fine, and it can go high. But see, nothing stays. So sometimes it goes like that. But that is the nature of it, you know. And we're saying to try to control. What do you have to see? Conceptually, this is a natural force. You know, I mean, the more control, like while on the one hand you have to put some controls, as I said, the new world is going to be. But look at uh, uh, China. The volatility in China is very low, right? And they are able to keep it going, right? They have other, you know, that is their way of doing it. Now, for us to be able to run that kind of volatility, we have to have the capability of doing all kinds of other things, right? I mean, I asked somebody, uh, a Chinese guy from the, uh, the IMF, who come. Some people have come to see me. So what do they say? Well, there, the government just tells banks stop lending right now, but and they do it immediately. Now, okay, maybe that's a that it's a, obviously a successful system. But now, for us to convert from this to that, I mean, you've got a button. How are you going to do it? I mean, you have to live with who you are and build the best within that. <coughs> And maybe over time you go in that direction. I don't know. Looking at uh, the Euro's experience, should we give up the romancing, uh, romancing the idea of uh, Asian creating <laughs> Asian Monetary Union? Absolutely. <laughs> Why don't we just too much energy going into it? But actually, we are much more culturally close, you know. But ultimately, it's not just about culture. You know, I mean, it's about fiscal policy. <laughs> right? You have one monetary policy, you don't want fiscal policy. But to make, make it one country, you feel differently.